the home of the common Joe and the common Sally in the know, even more so than all those media talking heads. College football dramatics this time of the year continue to spiral out of control as they do each and every year as that carousel continues to spin round and round with playoff scenarios every which ways you can think of, seven or eight different directions, as well as the coaching carousel this time of the year. If they're not being hired, they're being fired. If they're not being fired, they're being stolen away from somebody. And today, we're going to talk about it. Where, what do we have here? Here we come, riding around the corner. Here we come. It's almost over. It's almost over, but the anticipation's high for college football conference championship week is upon us, as well as numerous playoff scenarios and the coaching carousel keeps going round and round. I'll tell you what else keeps going round and round, because here they come once again. It's the outlaw posse now in effect, and we have plenty of Plenty of new Outlaw Posse members, so y'all bear with me real quick. We have 18 new members this past week that I hadn't got to. Big Cajones, Kelly, Michael Solo, Ferris, Dank918, Ryan Kirk, Dennis Kohler, Shane Hyman, Unboxing Reviews and More, Oklahoma Man, Brett Springer, Brandon96, The Big Lubbock, Barnes Homestead, Richard Young, Rob G, Mike Nada, Now Engrossed, and 55 Chevy have all mounted up and now got their badge of deputized, and they'll probably get their random four horsemen shout out, as well as possibly be the comment of the day, which is coming later in the show. Woo! It's most members I ever got in one week, but there's a lot of gifted ones. And those of you that, that, that were gifted memberships, if you want to continue to be a member, I think after one month, you have to re up. Now, I can also be reached on Twitter at OCF Productions. Now, getting right to it here. Huh. The coaching carousel keeps going round and round, and the playoff scenarios are coming strong and fast. Um, a little conundrum for the SEC. They might end up actually missing out on the playoff. And people's like, well, how would that happen? If Alabama beat Georgia, more than likely, you know, they, the committee would show their SEC bias and put the SEC in there. Not so fast, my friend as the great Lee Corso once said, or the ungreat. Some people like Lee, some people Let's don't. go over these uh, college football playoff scenarios, and then we'll get to the the meaty and juicy part of the coaching carousel that keeps continuing to go round and round as people getting fired, hired, and stolen away, as I said in the lead-up, as well as possible candidates to replace Jeff Levy at Oklahoma because we have a strong contingent of Oklahoma fans on here that want to hear who's coming to run that Oklahoma offense. But back to the playoff scenarios here. The uh, if Alabama beats Georgia. You would think they would get in, right? And some people even argue that Alabama and Georgia both should be in like they were in years past when Alabama beat Georgia and Alabama and Georgia got in. But this is a little bit different year. You have more undefeated teams and more teams up there that look just as deserving as Alabama and Georgia because the SEC hasn't looked quite as strong this year in the non-conference in the early part of the year. And so about the whole body of work, people got to remember, not about just November, even though November is always considered the month to remember. So if Alabama beats Georgia, okay, and Michigan and Washington and Florida State all went out and go undefeated, that's three spots that they're going to give to those teams. Most definitely. Now, they may leave Florida State out because they don't have their starting quarterback in these last two games. They play against teams that maybe not considered as quite as good competition. Louisville did Florida State no favors by losing to Kentucky. It sort of hurt Florida State. And then Florida State struggled with a very mediocre Florida team that's now 5-7. and seven. So Florida State is an undefeated team. May get left out for the first time in favor of a one-loss team like a, a Texas or an Ohio Stank, or Alabama. 
but that'd be the only undefeated team that might be in danger of being left out. But if those three get in, then there'll be one spot left. And that spot will be up for grabs between, if, and if Washington beats Oregon, they'll give Oregon two losses, so they'll be out of the mix. But that one spot will be up between Texas, Alabama, and Ohio State. So Ohio State already lost to Michigan. So more than likely, since they lost so late in the season, they're more than likely won't get in. It'll be between Alabama and Texas. And because Texas did beat Alabama head-to-head, not only did Texas beat Alabama head-to-head, they beat them in Tuscaloosa. So, you know, that's even more of a reason, in my opinion, to put Texas in over Alabama. And I'm an Alabama fan saying that, but let's be fair here. Head-to-head should matter. True, Alabama may be a better team now than Texas is, than Texas was in September. But... We don't know that for sure, do we? If Alabama and Texas played right now, we don't know for certain that Alabama would beat Texas. They'd probably be favored, but the way they played against Auburn, not so sure if Alabama would beat Texas in a rematch. So because we can't play that scenario out, then you have to put Texas in over Alabama, in my opinion. So if that happens, if those scenarios happen, it is very, very, very possible that the SEC will get left out of the playoff for the first time since, what is it, 2005? That's back in the BCS era when I only had two spots. But this will be the very first time in the four-team playoff era that the SEC doesn't have a representative. But it can absolutely, without a shadow of a doubt, happen. Now, in order for Alabama to get in, for the Alabama people out there that are wanting to strangle me right now, <laughs> <laughs> I think the best thing that ha- could happen to Alabama is Florida State to either struggle with Louisville or get beat by Louisville. If Florida State loses to Louisville, then I think Alabama and Texas might get in, and you might get an Alabama-Texas rematch at some point. I don't think they'll play each other in the first round. They'll probably both have to win their first round games in order to replay each other in the national title game. People like, what about Georgia? They're a two-time defending national champion. They've won 29 straight, right? Or is it 30? I'm not sure. I think it's 29 straight Georgia has won, which is a new SEC record, if I'm not mistaken. And they're the two-time defending national champion. She's like, well, that was last year, and that was years past. This doesn't have nothing to do with this year. Normally, I would agree with that. But the extenuating circumstances here is they are the two-time, not just one-time, two-time defending national champions haven't lost in 29 games, would lose to Alabama for like, and that would be like they was 30 and one. And a lot of people would say, hey, if they lost two games or something, I could understand you saying that Georgia shouldn't be able to be in to defend their national championship. But because they only have one loss, could Georgia possibly still stay in and then push out either Texas or Alabama? Because Alabama just freshly beat Georgia, if that happens, they might more likely wouldn't leave Alabama out. And at that point, they put Georgia and Alabama in over Texas, which would cause a huge outcry, in my opinion. And that's why I don't think they'll do it. I think that they'll actually have to just bite, just bite real hard because the Peach State's going to be in an uproar. So you want the Peach State in an uproar, or you want the rest of the nation in an uproar? I choose the latter. Well, actually, I wouldn't choose the latter. I'd choose, I'd choose the first option. I would rather the Peach State be in an uproar than the rest of the nation. So, if Georgia loses, more than likely, in my opinion, they're out. Now, let's get to. Um, I'm gonna bring something up for y'all. We'll start with the uh, college football projections here. I can y'all. Uh, Hopefully y'all can see that. It might not be big enough, but anyway, this is the college football projections, and they are as follows. Jerry Palm's projections right now have Georgia playing Florida. Well, not Georgia playing Florida State. Georgia playing Oregon, and Michigan playing Florida State right now. And Texas and Ohio stank is the is the last two out. In the bowls, they have Texas playing Tulane in the Fiesta Bowl. In the New Year's Six Bowls, Louisville playing Ohio State, Stank in the Orange Bowl. 
In the Peach Bowl, they have Missouri and Penn State. And in the Cotton Bowl, it's Washington and Alabama. And on further down, you'll see some other interesting matchups, Iowa versus Ole Miss and offense versus defense um, bout. Lane Kiffin's offense against Phil Parker's defense, which is a championship defense in Iowa. Um, on further down, you'll see some interesting matchups. Wisconsin's playing Texas A&M in the Music City Bowl. Notre Dame's playing in the Pop-Tart Bowl against Okie Pokey State. And then Oklahoma is playing Arizona in the Alamo Bowl, according to them. On further down, you see in the Las Vegas Bowl, you got the USC Skittle Shooters versus the Maryland Terrapins and what will probably be a game that ends up 52 to 51 or something. Just some interesting matchups. They did originally had USC in the Los Angeles Bowl, but they have moved UCLA into that slot to play UNLV. My argument is if they're going to move USC up to the Las Vegas Bowl, you might as well move them up to the Alamo Bowl and let Arizona slide down to the Las Vegas Bowl. Even though Arizona has a better record, I think that um, I think that because USC did beat Arizona head to head, that maybe USC should get the Alamo Bowl, and plus the TV people will absolutely love love that matchup. Which brings us to the comment of the day. Y'all ready for that? The comment of the day comes from Michael Dyche. Says, TV runs the bowl games just like most things in college football. TV would love an OSU. Not OSU. <laughs> I just lost my mind today. TV would love an Oklahoma versus USC matchup. Bowl selection committee always loves OU because they travel well. Even if USC doesn't, I think it will happen. I don't think it will happen, but never say never. So that is the comment of the day. Now let's pull up the coaching carousel for you guys. There it is. The coaching carousel and it's full effect now. Let's go scroll up here for y'all. Mike Elko has been officially named as the replacement for Jimbo Fisher. Now, my question to that is, Mike Elko was the defensive coordinator of Texas A&M under Jimbo Fisher. And, and so, which means he's a part of the original staff that you just, uh, of, the, of the head man that you just fired. So how is that bettering yourself? I think that, you know, as much as Texas A&M wants us to believe they have unlimited revenue, I think even Texas A&M, his pockets are getting a little thin after a $77 million buyout, and they just took – um, basically what they could get. They wanted to appease the fan base and get rid of Jimbo. At the same time, uh, they didn't really have the money to go after a big, big name like Dan Lanning because if they really wanted Dan Lanning and they still had enough money, they could have backed, backed the Brinks trucks up, and I think they could have maybe lured Dan Lanning to Texas A&M. But like I said, I even think at this point, Texas A&M, who's still paying um, the other coach, what was his name? Before, uh, <laughs> I can't remember his name. I was going to slip my mind. But uh, they're still paying buyouts from the previous coaching staff before Jimbo Fisher. So I just think they ran out of money. They might not want to admit that, but I think they did. Plus, there was rumors going around that they were offering Mark Stoops the job. And uh, Texas A&M fans pulled to Tennessee and basically threw a fit. And it's just like with Tennessee and Greg Schiano. And I bet you they wish they'd get Greg Schiano now instead of Jeremy Pruitt. So Texas A&M fans need to take notice. You know, Mark Stoops might not have a stellar record at Kentucky like you would want, but to win games like Mark Stoops has at the rate he has at Kentucky, I think Mark Stoops would have been a better candidate than Mike Elko. Moving on down the list here, Jonathan Smith left Oregon State, his alma mater, to go to Michigan State. Said so Smith is the perfect hire for Michigan State. Former Oregon State quarterback rebuilt the Beavers program into a consistent team despite had challenges in the recruiting department. Also, Oregon State uh, got left out of the expansion deal, 
and more than likely they're probably going to be headed to the Mountain West or they're going to invite a bunch of Mountain West to the Pac-12 and it's just going to be uh, the Mountain West with a Pac-12 mask on. So I think he's seen the writing on the wall with Oregon State and the challenges that lay ahead and them possibly dropping down to being a G5 school and decide to go to Michigan State and get a Big Ten job. Can't really blame him there. As it says here, Jeff Levy replaces Zach Arnett at Mississippi State. Says Levy's been successful as an offensive coordinator at Ole Miss, UCF, and Oklahoma. Find success in a new look SEC that includes Texas and Oklahoma. It will be almost impossible for a first year coach in a program that's constantly fighting up your battle like Mississippi State. Then it will be. But if Jeff can win seven or eight games a year at Mississippi State, he'll be adored there. For a very long time, and he can cut his teeth there and possibly move up to a bigger uh, name school at a later date. I also think he probably left Oklahoma, as you know, we discussed this in the last live stream because of some, some angst that was going on at Oklahoma, more likely over his father in law, um, Art Bryles, which is a very touchy subject. But it says here, David Braun replaced Pat Fitzgerald, and now the openings that we have now are Oregon State. Syracuse, who fired Dino Barbers, Boise State, Indiana, who fired Tom Allen, and very recently Houston fired Dana Hogerson. I know that makes Kuz happy, our buddy from West Virginia, because Dana Hogerson sort of did West Virginia dirty. Uh, and on down some of the mid-majors here, having some replacements on down to Duke, who's now going to replace have to replace Mike Elko and Rick Stockstill, who's been at Middle Tennessee State forever also stepped down. Notable extensions, Rhett Lashley, Dave Aranda, Dan Lanning, Gus Malzahn, Jeff Monkin of Army, and Sam Pittman of Arkansas, which was a surprise to me that they held on to him. Now, let's talk about possible replacements for Jeff Levy, because I know that's what the Oklahoma fans want to get to. But before we get to that, Let's do the Four Horsemen shout-outs. The Four Horsemen shout-outs of the day go to Kuz's Corner, David Cummings, Billy Townsend, and Storm 4601 are mounted up, saddled up, and they've been helping me with this college football invasion today. If you want to get your badge and get deputized like them, as well as the plethora that come in a while ago of 18 new members, all you got to do is hit the join button and subscribe button. You'll get your badge. You'll get deputized. You'll get your random four horsemen shout outs as possibly, also possibly be the comment of the day like Michael Dice was earlier. Now, let's bring up possible replacements for Jeff Levy. There it is. Y'all may not be able to see that, but they're saying, of course, here's the captain obvious choice. It's Seth Luttrell, who's an offensive analyst. My question is, why did he leave North Texas? I'm still not sure. Did he get fired, or was that just him deciding that he didn't want to do the mid-major anymore? The next one, of course, is the other captain obvious choice. Matt Wells, also an analyst. He was uh, well thought of at Utah State. His time there. While a short stint in Lubbock didn't go as planned, it's clear that Wells knows how to coach offense. In his last season's offense coordinator in the 2018, the Utah State Aggies averaged 47.5 points per game, which on trailed Lincoln Riley and Kyler Murray's led centers. Would Venables elevate from offensive analyst to full time offense coordinator? Would he and Latrell serve as co coordinators? And then the rest of them are Andy. Kotel Necky, I guess that's how you say his last name. He's the offensive coordinator at Kansas right now. This is a name that Venables knows well, it says. He's only been, been a month since Colton Necky's Jayhawks outmaneuvered Venables' defense, led by a backup quarterback in that game, in Kansas' first victory over OU since 1997. What better way to get back to Kansas than to take their offensive coordinator away from the beach, all right? <laughs> Moving on down, Dana Holgerson, who is the former – head coach at Houston. Dana may fall in the category of, of a person that we, you know, we always talk about. It's one of those guys that he's a great coordinator, but he's just not a great head coach. And Dana Holgerson may fit that. 
Uh, but also, Dana, to me, is a very shady guy. And I don't know that one on my staff because he's sort of a cancer to me. He may have eyes on a head coaching job, and he may be a problem for Brent Venables to have too many chiefs in the TP, so to speak, in my opinion. So I wouldn't hire Dana Hogerson, but he's on this list. Hogerson led the Cougars to a 12-2 and finish and number 17 ranking in 2021. He has familiarity with Oklahoma, as he called Oklahoma State's offense in 2010. He could be a candidate to take Levy's job if the Sooners give him a call. Sean Lewis, who's the offensive coordinator at Colorado, he's a flashy name right now, it says, and will most likely be in the market for a job after well in the nation. What seemed like a miraculous turnaround in three games in Colorado, the Buffaloes just won one game the rest of the season. So Lewis was demoted from lead play call. Because con time Deion Sanders is a spastic moron. But anyway, another topic for another day. Had to give my obligatory con time shot in for those, those con time groupies whose tent in the pants has fizzled on out. Brad Davis, LSU offensive line coach. He was a part of Oklahoma's 2000 national championship team as a player and could be ready to take the next step in his career. His coached offensive lines at Florida, Missouri, Arkansas, and LSU, and even served as Tigers interim head coach when they fired Ed Orgeron. He understands the expectations in Oklahoma. So that might be an outside the box. Philip Montgomery of offensive coordinator at Auburn. I don't understand why he's on the list. Um, he was the head coach at Tulsa for eight seasons, so I guess because he was in the state of Oklahoma, maybe that's the reason why. Maybe he was a decent coach at Tulsa. I'm not sure. But he did tutor his fair share of towns and quarterbacks, it says here. Heisman winner Robert Griffin III at Baylor and Case Keenum at Houston. So that's probably why his, he is probably being considered because his work at Auburn right now uh, still remains to be seen. Casey Woods, SMU offensive coordinator, is a shiny name. It's had success at SMU. Only problem might be Levy could call him as he is a native of Starksville, Mississippi. So Casey uh, may be fought over by Oklahoma and Mississippi State. And Mississippi State has become a sudden unexpected thorn in the side of the, the Sooners. You now y'all might be fighting over an offensive coordinator. Who knows? Dream candidates. Let's see what they got here. Oh, wild card. Cliff Kingsbury, senior offensive analyst and quarterbacks coach at USC. TCU offensive coordinator Kendall Browles. That'll really rile up Killer Breeze. Kingsbury has had experience and some success in both collegiate and professional head coaching ranks. I don't know if you count being average at Texas Tech, wouldn't he? But he does no offense, so he might be a good hire. Browles being the fact that he is related to Art Browles and there's a big dust up about Art Browles and Jeff Lebby, I don't think Kendall Bryles would be a good hire. Dream candidates is current offensive coordinator Sharon Moore at Michigan, who's probably on the radar for head coaching jobs after doing an excellent job for Michigan the last three games, even though I think he's a little over top with his supposed love for Jim Harbaugh. That was a little overkill for me. Um, and also Will Stein of Oregon. But Will Stein may be stillable. If Texas A&M can't steal Dan Lanning, maybe Oklahoma can steal their offensive coordinator. <laughs> Derail them a little bit, right? <laughs> but that's the thoughts of college football today going into this final week of college football as far as, I guess, the regular season. This is actually probably technically the postseason. When we go to the 12-team playoff, I'll be interested to see what they do with these uh, conference championship games. I think they should do away with them, to be honest with you, especially when they go to the 12-team playoff because people that have to play in a conference championship game may be banged up more than the people that get in the 12 that don't have to play in the conference championship game. So I think they should probably do away with conference championship games if we're going to have a 12-team playoff, in my opinion. Also, if y'all don't mind, give me your predictions and scores on the uh, – Georgia-Alabama game that's coming up this week, as well as Texas and Okie Pokey State. And with that, I'm fixing to get up out of here. If you don't mind, there's a little heart down here. You can throw a one-time donation in the program, a little heart option with a dollar sign in the middle. 
Also, you can get into the Outlaw Posse like the fellas did today. You can get your badge to be deputized, get your random four horsemen shout out, as well as be the comment of the day. It's only $2.99 a month, 75 cents a week. That's just a half a bottle of water, as Jonathan Lewis pointed out. And like, share, comment, and subscribe to Big Four, and they're all free. And I'm out of here. KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.